Hey everyone, my name is Ashley Smith and I am a seven star elite Diamond Beach body coach. And tonight I just wanted to share with you a little bit about what I do to stay organized as a coach. So there are so many different things that you can do to stay organized and on top of your business. You know, from anywhere from tracking people that you talk to, to just tracking your power hour and kind of making sure that you're doing the steps that you need to be successful in your own business. So. One of the things that has worked really well for me that I like to do is I use a notebook. So when I started, I was full-time teaching and I was really good with technology and I was always on the computer and doing things with my students. And so in between the little bits of time that I would get where I would have free time or, you know, where they were maybe doing independent work, then I would be able to hop on really quickly onto my computer input a couple names, send a few messages, that kind of thing. And so it was really easy for me to stay in touch and stay tracked with using online trackers. And so what I would do is I would just kind of create a, a Google spreadsheet or a Google Doc. Um, some people use Excel. And in there, that's how I would track my power hour. I would write down you know, all the names of people that I would talk to, different list of what I would what I would say every day to different people. Um, I would jot down the date, you know, what we talked about and when I was going to follow up and then down to even planning out my post and things like that. And that worked really well for me when I was coaching and working full time as a teacher. However, then I turned, you know, fast forward almost a year and now I'm a new mom. I have a five month old little boy and being on the computer all the time is just not realistic. It's just not gonna happen. And so for me, I like to stay organized with pen and paper. So you'll see kind of like my crazy chaos right here that I'm gonna show you. So one thing that I personally like to do because I am so busy and kind of all over the place half the time, it's very rare that I'm sitting for more than an hour at a time at my desk. And so I found that I find a notebook that's, you know, a good size and I, I go to like TJ Maxx or Marshalls or Target and find something cute. There's so many little quoted notebooks now that, that are really, really fun and they inspire me. And so I get excited to go to my notebook and write in there. And so for me, um, I'm able to have this with me. I keep it in my purse and my diaper bag and I just have it with me all the time so that I can jot things down. Um, and so what I do is, I've got my notebook, and when I open it up, on my left side of the paper, I have contacts. And up here at the top, I'll just write contacts. Okay, and over here is the date, so you know, whatever the date is, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. And then um, on the other side is my to-do list, the list of things that I need to do that day, down to even chores and things that I do um, around the house or things that I need to get done because let's face it, I'm a mom and I've got other things to do too and um, in addition to my coaching stuff. So whether it's writing out, you know, announce so-and-so to the team page, send this package out, you know, Shakeology samples, post about this, this, clean the bathrooms, vacuum, whatever it is, is on my to-do list on the side. And now one thing that I do, because I always have this long list in my head of things that I really want to get done at some point, but they're just not going to happen today. And so at the beginning of my notebook, before I start my two sides, I skip about 15, you know, 10 or 15 pages out of the front. And in there is where I have a long list of things that I want to do, my master list. And that could be anything from you know, make a new coach training or make a video about this, make a video about coach organization, make a video about team culture, you know, um, revamp my new coach packet or, you know, create this website, you know, write a blog post about this list of different things. And so those are all things that I want to do in the near future, but they're just not going to get done today. And so they're not going to go on my to-do list that I have in my everyday, in my everyday planner. So that's what I do daily. I've got my contact list on the left side and my to-do list for the right side. And then I flip to the next page for the next day and I do contact and to-do list. And one reason that I've started to do this I really like is that when I'm going through my news feed and I'm scrolling through different things, it's easy for me to look at a person and then be like, hmm, are they a coach? Are they somebody that I added? Should I know who they are? And so I can easily flip back through my contacts and I'm like, oh, Susie Q, okay, awesome. I just added her yesterday. She's not a coach. I'm going to go, I'm going to go right on her page. I'm going to go comment on some of her things. I'm going to interact with her so that she knows that I'm interested in her and she could become possibly a potential challenger or a coach down the road. 
And so I just like to be able to have it point blank right here. I don't have to go and open a bunch of tabs on my computer. It's just all right there for me to see. And that's something that I really, really enjoy doing. So it makes it easier for me personally. Now, in addition to that, um, I have some other trackers that my team uses. And what ultimately, when you're trying to think of how to organize your business and plan, the one, let's see, the one piece of advice that I have for you is to find what works for you. You might not be somebody who needs everything um, electronic, and that's okay. Even if everyone else is doing it, don't be different. Do something that works for you. The one thing that I can attest to is that trying to do what everyone else is doing just because it's like the new hot thing and the, and the thing that everyone else is doing and it doesn't work for you, it's going to hurt you in the end. For me, I was trying to keep everything electronic and trying to maintain my power hour and stuff, and it just was not happening for me as a new mom. And so I would find myself starting to like, oh, like I don't really want to go do my power hour right now or feeling discouraged. And so um, I changed it up, and now I went to good old paper, and I'm going to show you my binder. <laughs> and you see there's like sticky notes on it. It's nothing pretty, but it helps me stay organized and I am such a, a natural pen and paper person that I'm going to stick to the old school ways and I think it's working just fine for me. So what I do, what I have pretty much in my binder is I have different, you know, little sticky notes here and there, but I have some tabs. I highly recommend getting some dividers. These are just, um, these are like cute little skinny ones that were from Amazon, really cheap, and they came with like 30 in a pack. <laughs> I think they're for a scrapbook. I think I read the label wrong, but hey, they work. So, um, okay. So now, what I what I do next is I plan my my Beachbody business out by month, um, at a glance. And so, um, for an example, this is my calendar for the month, and you see that I have it all labeled out. So this was February. And every day I write everything in there, y'all, down to um, like the national wake up call. I write that down. I write down that Thursday's payday, like yay, something fun to think about. Um, I write down when I have other things, personal things, Bible study, um, appointments for my son, appointments for me, when my husband's working late. Um, you know, and then I start going through and I, and I, and I write in my post. Okay, so Tuesday, this Tuesday, I wanna post Sarah's transformation picture. On Thursday, I want to post this water detox recipe. And y'all, I plan out my entire month. Now, granted, I don't plan every single day out um, as far as posts go because I just share my life as it comes. And that's what that's what makes me be able to relate to people is just sharing naturally what's going on in my life. But um, I, I try to plan out some specific posts, maybe two to three a week, you know, that kind of go on the themes of my days. So whether it's Motivation Monday or Tipsy Tuesday or Transformation Tuesday, um, Thirsty Thursday, Throwback Thursday, uh, what, what are some other ones? Flex It Friday, um, Sunday Fun Day, you know, just Think of different kinds of themes that you can have and um, or what I ate Wednesday or work it out Wednesday. Different things that you can share with people that can kind of be something consistent that they start looking forward to. And that's what I put in here. And then I put, you know, my team calls in there. Every Wednesday I have check my inactives again. Make sure that everything's good for, for my rank for the next week. Um, what else do I put in there? The days that my challenge groups are starting, I also put in... Um, when I have calls with my diamonds, with my emeralds, with my new coaches, um, when I do live power hours, my goal of when I want to hit success club, um, sorry, my thing's going off. Um, the goals of when I want to hit success club five, success club 10, when I want to hit it in my husband's, my husband's, um, CBC. So all kinds of things like that, just reminders for myself. And so this is kind of nice because I have it up on my wall over here and I can easily glance at it. And my husband and I use it to kind of help us gauge, you know, what are the days where I'm going to have a longer days by myself and what days am I going to have a call and we might need to find somebody for Hudson to watch him. I promise if you plan out an Advance, it's going to help your life so much more and it's going to help you and your husband or your partner to not get into arguments about I'm supposed to have a call and you're not here and that kind of thing. It'll help so much if you can kind of just plan that way. Um, okay, so that's my calendar. 
Now, what's in my binder? Okay, so like I said, I plan a month in advance. And now I have these trackers that I use, and if you're on the Inspiration Crew team, then you have these. And um, these were given to me by somebody in my upline, and I personally love them. And so if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then you know feel free to message me and I, I can share them with you. But So I kind of plan out, like I said, my month. And so in my first page, I've got this tracker, and it talks all about my month. And it's kind of just a brain dump of things that I want to do over the month. If I don't set goals for myself and I just have this massive to-do list, then I find that I don't get anything done. So if I kind of plan it out like that and I say, okay, these are like the five or six big things that I want to do this month, but then I also remind myself of things that I need to do. Okay, at the end of the month, I need to celebrate Success Club and post my leaderboard. Um, I want to post the Success Club banner and my team page. What else? Um, you know, I want to organize and set up my next group for March or for the next month. And so I kind of just plan out what I'm going to do um, monthly so that I kind of have it a month in advance. I check in with my success partner and we kind of plan together. And then I move and I put everything on my big calendar. Now, what I do daily, um, I track every day so that I constantly know who am I following up with, who are my friends that I'm adding every day, who am I adding value to, who, who, are, um, who are challenger prospects, who are coach prospects, everything like that I want to remember and write down. So for me, I have, and there's, you know, there's a bunch of different trackers, like I said, but for me, I kind of organize it as a couple things that I'm gonna do um, that day. So I've got a little spot up here that says morning, afternoon, and night. And that's just where I kind of plan out my day. Like, so in the morning, I know I've got an appointment, and so, you know, it's gonna be the afternoon time when I welcome so-and-so to my team page. Or, you know, the evening time, I've got a team call, and I kind of just give myself some things that I need to remember for the day, and, and to-do list things as well. Then, I plan out my social media posts for the day. I have a little section there that has five lines, and I literally write out what I'm gonna post about that day, because if I have it there, then I remind myself, and I remember, and a lot of times, I'll even put a reminder in my phone. Okay, so 6 a.m. When I, when I wake up, normally I always post something either motivational or something about my workout that I just did, something like that. Then, you know, by mid-morning, I'm usually posting something else, whatever I haven't posted yet, you know, my workout or my breakfast or, you know, some kind of recipe, something that something that people might be able to use and relate to um, in, the, in the afternoon and, and in the rest of the day. And then I just, I really do set alarms for myself. So I remember like, oh, I really wanted to post that Flex Friday selfie. So I remind myself I'm going to post that at two o'clock. And I have it in my phone. So when the alarm goes off 15 minutes before, then I can go ahead and be thinking of that post, get it ready, and post it. Especially if I'm out and about running errands, I can quickly stop and think about what I was trying to post that day, even if I already have it done, and then I can go ahead and post it. Um, then remember that every day it's so important just to work on yourself. Drink your Shakeology. Did you do your workout? Did you get in some personal development? Did you spend some time just on you? Did you just take a deep breath and kind of get some things going for yourself just so that you can kind of get to that place where you feel calm and centered and, you know, and ready to tackle your day or ready to get back to work or, or get started with work if you have a full-time job and you, you work your business at night? Um, you know, that's so, so important. Um, and then you get into your power hour. And for me, tracking that has helped so much. And so for me, the things that I do in my power hour personally, I check my back office. I check into any kind of training that I'm in, um, whether it's something that I'm hosting or something for, uh, for my own coaches and challengers. I check in on my challenge groups. I reply to any kinds of comments or likes on my, on my feed, on any of my posts, because that, again, bumps my posts back out into the newsfeed and back into their newsfeed so that they can, um, you know, more people can be seeing my posts and engaging in it. I go out and I comment on three posts, not posts from coaches, but posts from just people in my network, friends, people who are not um, challengers or coaches yet, people who could be potential business building coaches, discount coaches, challengers, buyers of programs, anything like that. I want to comment on their post. And then I've been adding to my network. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to message three friends and I'm going to send them something really, really simple like, hey girl, 
I hope you're doing great. I saw your pictures of you and your family um, on vacation last week. The kids are getting so big. Or, hey girl, I loved your dress that you wore last night. Where is it from? Something like that. Not Nothing about coaching, but purely just adding value to their life, asking a question and kind of allowing yourself to get into to that conversation and into their life to have to, to build that relationship and add value to their life. Then um, three messages of encouragement I send, if not more, if I have time. And again, that's very similar things, posting on people's pictures and posts and comments. And I just, I just write a little nice comment like, oh, I love your dress or, you know, your house is so beautiful. You know, where did you guys move to? Or just commenting purely on it. Oh, your baby's so cute. He's so cute. Um, you know, anything like that, anything that you would want people to post on your stuff, go post that on somebody else's. And then I want to interact in my interest groups is one of my last things that I do before I start sending messages out and interacting in my interest groups. Those are just groups that I'm a part of that I personally um, relate to mom groups, groups, and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. So groups from Atlanta, you know, moms meetup groups in Atlanta, groups where people sell things in Atlanta, anything that I can kind of relate to. And so for you, think of a hobby, think of something that you have that's really specific to you and try to find a group on Facebook that you can join or just in person in your community. That allows you to have another network of people to relate to, to, to build relationships with, to be commenting and posting on different posts that they make, to then add them possibly as new friends. And then again, continuing to build that relationship. That's such a huge part of your power hour. Then the last things that I do is I add five new friends to Facebook or to Instagram. I invite them to, I, I, I invite five to 10 people to a challenge group. I invite five to 10 people to coach, whether it's to go to a sneak peek or just to put a little bug in their ear, in their ear and say, Hey, I think you're really, really encouraging. I don't know if you'd be interested, but, um, you know, I just thought I would tell you that I think you would make an amazing coach. Have you ever thought about doing what I do? You already share workouts and healthy tips and motivation. You know, you would make an amazing coach. So inviting somebody to something like that and then following up. So I don't go to bed without checking all of my messages and checking all of my emails and everything and zeroing out everything so that by the time I've answered today, then tomorrow morning and tomorrow afternoon, all those messages and responses are flowing back in. And at the end of the day, I do the same thing again. I zero out all those messages. Messages, I answer everything, I follow up, and then the cycle just begins and begins and begins. And so that's kind of how I run my power hour. And for me, it really helps me to kind of write down those little categories, and I have them written out in my power hour so that I can just check them off at the boxes as I go. And I check off when I do different things. I'm a huge list person, and I personally love when I see things checked off and I'm like, Check, did it, awesome. Because it feels so gratifying to like make either make a check mark or make a line through that that piece of um, you know that that task on your on your to do list. For me, it's like super gratifying. So that's another reason I like pen and paper because it's just really nice for me to be able to do that and I can visually see that it's done. Um, one other thing that I want to share too that um, if you don't track it like that, you definitely at least need to track the people that you're talking to. Y'all, when you get, I've been coaching for about 14 months now, and when you get to over a year in, and if you have not been tracking, you are seriously missing out on the opportunity to follow up with so many people. For me, I can go back through all of the things that I've been tracking for the last 14 months and see the different people who they never followed through or maybe they never ordered or um, you know they never fully committed to coaching or things like that. And so I can go back and every month I can kind of pick a little uh, a, you know a group of them and re-follow back up, re-invite them, re-get them acquainted with the idea of a challenge group or, or ordering a certain program because I remember that their goal was you know, to tone up but they wanted something really, really short and simple. And so this new program that just came out is perfect for them and I was just thinking about them so I went ahead and told them about it. You know, it's so important to have all that somewhere so that you can really utilize the power of the follow-up with people that you've been tracking. So. With that, my last thing is just really making sure you're tracking your friends added, the coach prospects that you have, and also the challenger prospects that you have. For me, I just have a, again, a sheet of paper and it has just a little, has four columns on it. I write their name, I write a little blurb about what 
you know, what do we talk about? They're from my fit page or they're from my Instagram. And we talked about coaching, but they said no. And I wrote down the date and I just have those notes in there so that when I go back or when I go to reinvite them, I don't sound silly and invite them to the same thing as if I never have talked to them before, you know? And so, you know, when it's a friend, I put, you know, I added them. And then when they actually accept, I do a little check mark so that I know that we are actually friends. Um, and then I do the same thing for challengers and for coaches. I make sure that I write their names out and, um, and I keep track of what we've been talking about. And if they say no, I put a line through them. And they might be somebody that I come back to in a year or in a couple months. But for now, they're a no off my list and I move on. So I hope that kind of helped you, um, you know, just hear how a coach um, organizes her life and organizes her time. You know, like I said, when I was working full time, it was easy for me to kind of plan out specific times. I would wake up early and I work my booty off. I do my workout. I get 20 minutes of work in. I'd listen to personal development on my way to work. I'd get to work and in every single little extra bit of time, I would be doing parts of my power hour. I would drive home listening to personal development and then I would stay up late and I kind of just had to tell my husband, hey, listen, honey, if our goal is for me to quit my job and to be able to come home, then you know, I'm going to have to spend a little extra time at night working. And we made an agreement and it was fine. And I would sit while he would watch TV and do different things. And, and I would focus and I'd do my work right next to him. And it worked out great for us. Now as a mom, life is a little crazy. So maybe you're a mom watching this right now and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't have a schedule. And girl, I feel you. My son is all over the place and we don't have much of a schedule right now at five months. And so for me, I still, I wake up at five to between five and six and I go ahead and I start getting my power hour done and I set my timers um you know every I spend certain amounts of time on my different tasks of my power hour so that I don't sit there sending invites and things for an hour and then I realize oh my gosh I haven't followed up I haven't added new friends I haven't done this and so um you know really creating a, some kind of schedule for yourself and then if you don't fit it in then just fit it in throughout the day but make sure that you're tracking who you're talking to by the end of the day. You know, even if you're adding different friends and following up with messages, I encourage you that by the end of the day, before you lay your head to rest, that you make sure that you have those names written down somewhere because tracking is so important in your business. So anyways, I hope that helped you just a little bit to kind of see how I, Ashley Smith, um, kind of format my business and plan out my months and track my power hour and all that good stuff. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions, please post them below and I would love to answer them as well as send you any resources if you need them. Okay. All right. Bye guys. Have a great night.